Hey guys, thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Sabrina. Poppy, little ship egg. I'm gonna be showing you how I make a mug from start to finish. So if that sounds like an exciting time, you can keep on watching. If you want to see more pottery related content, you can follow me on Instagram at Ceramic Sabrina, and you can also follow me on TikTok at Ceramic Sabrina. And you can also subscribe to my channel if you want to know the next time that I post a video, which I promise that I'm not gonna not post a video for five months again. That was a one-time thing. We're not even gonna talk about it. Um, but what we are gonna talk about is making a mug. So I'm gonna stop rambling and we're gonna get it started. Hey guys, how's it going? It has been a while since we sat down and we did this this clay thing together, but I'm super excited to be showing you guys these mugs today. Uh, I actually made four identical mugs, but I kind of just condensed it all into one little fun video. So we're going to start out by getting some clay wedged up, pushing it around, making sure there are no air bubbles in it. And then I'm just going to weigh up four pieces of clay, make sure they all weigh the same. Usually for a mug, I'll go about a pound, a little bit over a pound, somewhere in that range. And then I always like to slap them around, get them nice and even to start. Uh, it just helps to keep everything nice and round on the wheel if you start with something that's already nice and round. And then we're gonna get that clay on the wheel and get it centered, which is always such a fun time. And yeah. I've been teaching a lot of classes lately and I feel like centering is definitely the hardest thing to teach to someone um, and I, I remember it being the most difficult thing to learn um, but you know as with most things in life practice always helps um, and I feel like one day I just woke up and I was like oh centering makes sense now I can do it and then ever since then well, I can't say that I can do it 100% of the time, but like 95% of the time, I got it. Uh, usually the more clay that you use is harder to center, so I'm always practicing building up my clay abilities, but um, you know, about a pound of clay, I can, I can center it pretty well most of the time. Uh, but kind of the fun thing about clay is that everything affects everything else. It's definitely like a butterfly effect sort of medium Because uh, however well you wedge the clay to begin with affects how well you can center it How well you center it affects how well you can pull your walls Which affects how well you can trim it which affects how well it'll dry and how well it'll fire and you know, there's so many things that can go wrong, but there are so many things that can go right. And when they go right, it, it feels good. Um, so anyways, as you can see, maybe uh, I went ahead, centered the clay, opened it up. I measured it since I am making identical pieces. I always try to measure as I go just to keep everything consistent. And then we're going to start pulling our walls up. Uh, things are looking, you know, they're looking a little tiny bit wobbly right now, but that's fine. I'm pretty sure I fix it. Um, yeah, this one, this looks a little better. Uh, I like to use a like wooden or plastic rib on the outside just to really clean up the walls, straighten things out. Kind of helps thin the walls out as well without having to pull it. It just kind of carbs away some clay so I do enjoy a good rib and yeah, this is looking looking like a mug to me give it another measure measure the height you can always cut off the rim if you need to um, it's kind of tricky because you want to make sure that the bottoms are all the same thickness so that the heights end up being the same so, like I said, there's so many variables to every piece, and it's always fun to make identical pieces because you, you learn a lot, and, you know, like, they're, they're identical, but they're handmade pieces, which, at least for me, like, you know, there's always going to be something a little bit different about them, but that is okay. And yeah, we're going to get that piece off the wheel, beautiful. 
and now we're making a handle. Uh, so I usually make handles before I trim just so the handles can dry out for a bit while I trim. So pulled a couple handles, took my now leather-ish hard mug. Um, so it's dry enough that I can pick it up and handle it without it losing its shape, but it's wet enough that I can still carve away without damaging the piece. Uh, so one thing that's pretty cool, I actually learned how to center with just my hands, like center a piece to trim, um, which it's, I don't really know if it's like tap centering, which I know is a technique that I've seen some, you know, more skilled potters do. It's not really like that, but I don't know, it just saves me a little bit of time and it makes me feel cool because I'm like, oh, I don't even need a tool to center this clay. But if you do need a tool to center your clay, that's perfectly fine too, because that's probably more accurate anyways. Um, but yeah, so here we are trimming, adding a little foot ring. I always like to stop, push on the clay, make sure it's not too thin. Uh, you can kind of tell by the give on the clay if it's too thin or if you still got some more clay to trim. And then now that our mug is trimmed and our handles have dried out a bit, we are just gonna attach that handle. So I'll just use a pin tool and scratch up the location for the handle. And I always try and make sure that they are directly on top of each other because a lot of my earlier mugs, the handles were a little or a lot crooked. So I try and pay attention to that. So that's all roughed up. I always will spray the mug down a bit just because the mug is usually drier than the handle at this point. And ideally everything will be the same level of hydrated. Um, you know, if the mug is too dry and you add this fresh wet handle on there, sometimes that doesn't work out because the handle doesn't dry with the mug, if that makes sense. So spraying it down just so everything sticks together all nice. And I usually start with the top piece and then kind of squeeze that in there. I use my fingertip to smooth out the seam. Uh, I'll also use like a damp paintbrush to get into the, the crevices that are sometimes hard to reach. And yeah, uh, it's really important at least in my opinion, to really smooth out the seams on your handles. Um, if you leave them kind of open, then that often will lead to cracks. But I have seen a lot of people make really cool handles that are not smoothed into the mug like, like mine are, so to each their own. But anyways, so uh, yeah, like I said, it's been a while. Um, I actually, since I last spoke to you guys, I I was a mailman. I was, um, I guess you could call it a mail lady, but it just doesn't have the same ring as mailman. Um, but yeah, during the holidays, I, I worked as a mail carrier for the good old United States Postal Service, and I am no longer doing that, which is probably for the best because it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole life but it was also kind of fun but also kind of horrible but I had absolutely no time to do pottery at all let alone film it or do anything and it was it was rough but um, that's that's what I've been up to since then um, but now I've got a little more time on my hands so I'm definitely excited to fill that with pottery and um, like I mentioned earlier my classes have been going pretty well. It's crazy to think it's been two and a half years since I started teaching classes because I still remember being so nervous before I started. I did not think I could do it and I almost told them that I couldn't do it because like I just walked into the studio and they were like hey you're you're kind of good at that and we need a teacher so do you want to give it a shot and I was like uh uh mm, uh sure so here we are now, but I think it was, it's been really good. And having to explain something to someone else really forces you to think about it from different perspectives. And you know, cause everyone learns kind of differently. And 
it's a constant challenge of finding the right combination of words and analogies and all of that stuff to make something that makes sense in my brain make sense in someone else's brain because you know there's I can't just transfer the information I have to actually explain it and um, it's super fun so love that anyways we have moved on to the decoration aspect of this video these mugs were commissioned for me to do for someone so they requested that I write cheers on them which is a super cute design that I have done a couple of times you might have seen it on my Instagram if you're following me over there so um, I kind of know what I'm what I'm doing here I'm just you know kind of scratching the the outline of the letters out and then rolling little coils and then forming the letters and attaching them by scratching up both sides of the mug and the coil and then just really making sure I go over it with um, the end of this pin tool to smooth out the seams and then I will go over it with a damp paintbrush to really smooth everything out, compress the, the fresh clay and try and minimize the risk of any cracks popping up. It kind of takes a while to do this sort of design, but I really like the way it ends up looking, so it is totally worth it. And then I forgot to film it, but I just went over these letters. Well, first I fired the piece, which I also didn't film. Um, but then I went over the letters with wax so that the glaze would not stick to the, the raised letter part. And then here you can see I am glazing the piece. Um, I did two layers of Blue Rutile by Amico and two layers of Textured Turquoise. And then I fired them once again. And this is what they ended up looking like. So I'm pretty happy with them. I really like the blue with the brown of the clay. I think they all look similar enough that they match, but they all have a unique flair. Um, but yeah, I'm super happy with them. The person who ordered them really enjoyed them, so that always makes me feel good. And I hope that you enjoyed watching as well. And if you did, you can like this video, you can follow me on my other platforms, and yeah, I think that's all I have for you today. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!